How long is this war going to continue on for? No, oh, a lot longer. Have I done a three mountains run? Yep, it's on YouTube. I suppose that's spoiling it a little bit though. Well, with a little bit. I suppose that's spoiling... I suppose me talking about it being spoiling... <laughs> would be kind of... <laughs> would be kind of spoiling it even more. Spoilception. Is raising something that actually happened in real life or is it representing something else? Um... I feel like hordes that conquer land should be able to gain its technological progress, yes. And that it is indeed something that actually happens. But, um... What I also think, and this is actually, and like I'm not being trollery or anything right now. If you're fighting a war against someone that has a military tech advantage on you, you should get an extra point in military power a month. Like plus one a month. Because a lot of technological and military technology spread happened because one state A was at war with state B and state A had sucky tech and state B had great tech. In the uh, following wars that state A would fight, they would copy a lot of the shit that they had been fighting. And then it would be independent from its own technological advancements. Because it would be literally copying. And, and this makes perfect fucking common sense. If you're fighting someone and they're suddenly using fucking uh, this new black powder from the east. And they're kicking your ass with that black powder. Would you be using that black powder in your next war? Would you be figuring out how it works? Why it's so effective? Etc. Etc. Yes, you would. Would you be able to figure it out instantaneously? No, you would not. But, during the process of that war, you should be getting a military tech bonus. And that's not a neighbor bonus. That's something definitively different. Because there's... Something fundamentally different about being neighbors with someone who has some special technology and fighting someone, right? Puts a lot, a lot more urgency onto the situation. So I feel like if you're fighting someone that has a superior military tech, it would make sense for you to gain an extra point in military power. That's... I, I'm completely sidetracking now. That's not what your question was about. I like to think about the change culture button. At some time, Yoan was like, we need to find a happy mix between propaganda and ethnic cleansing and put it into one button. Culture change. Ah! Well. I hate repeating myself. No, uh, no. I, I, I do like listening to myself talk. <laughs> Narcissistic asshole. 101. But cultural cleansing in this, I mean, culturally converting shit in this time period is not about propaganda or ethnic cleansing or any anything like that. Because you're only converting the elite. Because your run-of-the-mill peasant has no national identity. This does not exist in the, until the 19th century. So there is no national identity. These people don't feel... Sichuanese, they feel Langzhuangese, they feel more aligned to their local village or city than they feel aligned to a global, I mean a regional uh, culture. The elite in this city, on the other hand, feel very much aligned with that culture. If only to just, you know, be um, independent, feel independent, I don't know how to put that, be an upstart and bastard. If you press the culture convert button, you're not actually converting everyone in that, you're not converting any peasants. 
to, uh, you know, wear their hat sideways on Sunday, but you're converting the, um, you're converting the local elite to wear their hat sideways on Sunday in exchange for, uh, fucking a tax discount or some bullshit like that. Peasants are peasants, but they still have culture. That's very much true. But that culture has no real you know, impact. Not until public education and national uh, identity comes along. It, it really should be somewhat represented in the game. Like if, if you get into the second half of the 18th century and the early bit of the 19th century, you need you need to somehow that needs to somehow be symbolized, but that's way too complicated. To uh, Cara del Mexico, yes. All right, next up we need to fight Itza. Glorious. Caradel Mexico. Like, think about it this way, right? Suppose you're a peasant, you have no contact with any of your... Uh, suppose you're a peasant in... Uh, let's make this a little bit more clear. Suppose you're a peasant in Derbyshire. All your life you've been living in... Derby. Yeah, Derby is a bad example. All your life you've been living in, uh, you know, on the slope of this mountain, right? For the entirety of your life, you're not going to move anywhere. You're just going to sit on the slope of this mountain, farm your crops, do your shit. Yeah. Every once in a while, some stupid fucking official is going to come over and they're going to be like, Hey, I need me two ounces of grain. And you're going to give him those two ounces of grain. And that's going to be your life. Are you going to feel any kind of connection with the dude that's living on this slope of this mountain in Northumberland? No, you're not. Fuck do you care about that guy? Maybe you are going to feel some kind of collection, um, connection because of religion, right? But culture? Yeah. You might, you might say, yeah, but they'll speak the same language. In France, they didn't have a unanimous language in even up to the, f the the first world war like there were lots of different dialects and some people would not be able to understand one another like all of the national thing the national traditions that you have in your mind right now like suppose you're from the netherlands you have a, a lot of these national traditions and you're like yeah we've been doing this for ages but no this is propaganda from the 19th century it's all propaganda it, it, these are things that have been fed to you and I feel like I'm getting into the tinfoil hat area here but that, that's not what I'm saying it's pretty close to what I'm saying that's not what I'm saying though like I know it sounds like that but nationalism is invented it's not an actual thing right like a lot of the origin stories of nations today are just made up in the 19th century and that, 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 that it's kind of shitty shit I thought EU4 represented a change from dynasties to national identity though no EU4 represent well it it's in the exact area it's in the um the time period that it happens, but the real fucking change is when you get into Vicky 2. That's when that shit really starts kicking, kicking in. Um, in EU4, you get the change from a dynastic state to a territorial state. Um, Before it was the um, before and, and and this is and this happens in the middle of the game, so it's really interesting, right? 
It happens in the middle of the game. In 1648, the Peace of Westphalia, they, they, they call Europe, they refer to Europe as having a Westphalian system in which you have actual states that have borders and that control a certain amount of land. Whereas before you had a family that owned a specific amount of land and that, you know, that land was their families. It, 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 it was their dynastic land. It was their dynastic state. And then in 1648, it changes to actual borders, so it changes into territorial states. But ter territorial states are something inherently different from national states when you have this um, homogenous thing. Like, everyone in this state feels like they're part of the state inherently. And so you get this weird um, situation where a lot of the people from Germany in the 19th century, a lot of the people in Germany, they felt German. And they, they thought they were German. Hold on, let me just refresh the music here. A lot of the, the people in Germany, and then this is some this is some fundamental and um, historical, I don't know, fucking, how do you call this? Theory? I don't know. Uh, the people from Germany, you know, they felt German. Um, now, let's exclude this bit. They felt German. They knew they were part of a larger German entity, or rather, that is what was, you know, more or less invented. But regardless, they felt German, but there was no state. So they feel hum um, homogenous. But this, there, there is no central German state. In France, it's the other way around. There is a central state, but the people don't actually... Uh, there, there's no homogenous culture. So you get a, a, um, I don't know, dichotomy? This is the classic split between a... Um, a state nation and a cult culture nation. I don't know the English terms for that, but it, 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 it it's really interesting. But all of this, all of that nation, anything nation related is uh, past 1800 and beyond. So, and, 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 and so when you culture convert something and you're like, oh my god, this is way too easy. It shouldn't be this easy to fucking genocide people and not lose development. Don't think about it like that, because that's not what you're doing. You're uh, you're just con you're just convincing a couple of the elite to uh, you know do whatever it is that you want them to do. They started feeling German in the in the French conquest. No, no, no. That's what sparked the initial um, desire for a German nation. Nationalism tends to be ethnocentric. No, not really. Because the US, you already mentioned that. Don't mind if I do. But there's many other examples. Like, the, you, you say the US is an exception. But what about Switzerland? Like, they have this culture called Swiss. But that's not what... The, that's not the ethnicity of these people. Like, there's... Um, Italians, French, German... It's not one ethnicity. Ethnicity. Like the, the ethnicity. That that that's not the prime thing that makes a nation. What makes a nation is purely what you can make people think that is the nation. So.
Lithuania was a so-called culture nation. No, well, Lithuania, Lithuania would be... Uh, Lithuania is a bit of a weird example, right? But like the Ottomans would be a state nation, that would be one of the prime examples of a state nation. Because th th there's no real like... binding thing other than you know the state itself and if you are part of the state and then you are part of uh, the state nation but the Ottomans really failed at that a lot of people fail at that it's a difficult thing to do but a culture nation cu culture nation really it only works for German like saying culture nation doesn't ring ring very well in my in my head like I feel like I should be saying Kultur Nation <laughs> it's a typical German thing but I'll tell you what though nationalism is fucking interesting And it's it, it it it's also really invented. Like it it doesn't exist. It's air. It, it's not there. This is something you have to be aware of when thinking about movies like Braveheart. Like like really? Are you gonna tell me that uh, Farmer X is gonna be like, oh man, I need to I need to fucking join up with this William Wallace fellow? I better join up with this William Wallace fellow to defend my Scottish nation in 1300. That's not something that happens. You're gonna be like, oh my god, man. I need to water my fucking plants, otherwise they die and I don't have food this summer. That's the thing you're worrying about. Alright, so I finished my cores. Pretty sure I can piece that dive yet then. It's a social construct, yes. Um, it's a social construct, but it it's very much It's a really useful tool for um states to bind people together, to get people together to, you know, put their shoulders on their some kind of cause, like, any kind of cause. Like, whatever it is that you want to do, it's just fucking... It's brilliant! I can tell you what, if uh, Machiavelli was living in the 19th century and he was like, Oh my god, guys, this nation thing that you're all thinking about, this is some good shit, guys! Holy shit, you thought this... You came up with this on your own? Holy shit, guys. What a time to be alive. That's what Machiavelli would say. He would be very excited about nationalism. And the ways you could use that. How dare you, he defended Scotland against the English, and then defended America against the English hundreds of years later. That sounds like nationalism to me. <laughs> so, Floria, what you're saying is tribalism should be a thing again. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'm saying nationalism is... I, I'm, I'm not judging, right? I, 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 I ain't judging. I'm not saying nationalism is bad. Binding people together is a good thing. But being aware of it being a binding factor and it being completely fictional is a, <laughs> a useful thing to know, I, I'd say.
Especially in the... Uh, I don't know, I don't want to get into politics once again. I, I feel like I can't do this though. Like every single day I'm told, you know. Historians have an obligation to... Say shit to people. I'm like, no I don't. Fuck you. Die in a fire. Get wrecked. I don't want to talk about that. Please get into politics, this shit is fascinating. No. 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 No, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to step on people's toes. I only want to say things that I... Oh shit. Well. Here we get to the point where anyone else would quit. And we're not gonna stop here. I said at the start of this playthrough, we are not teching up past tech 15. And I'll give you this, ladies and gentlemen, we are not teching up past tech 15. So I am going to develop my provinces. Riveting, excitingly fucking awesome gameplay this is. Anyway. Which don't want no Arab United Nation on our doorstep, Flore. No, but neither do I want. Like. L Imagine every single fucking local culture, any local fucking guy, any local culture, being like, oh, you know what? Uh, way back, way back in history, we had some kind of uniqueness. Let's hold a referendum and get independent, because that's going to change the world into a giant fucking clusterfuck. I don't want that. I like big blobs and they cannot lie. And that's a very that's a very political statement and I don't want to say anything of that. You could go for a world conquest. I don't want to though. I want to mil build the one million stack. However, I do need to threaten people f for their provinces though. I want to threaten a Yuta for Chiang Mai. And I want to threaten Mong Yang for Pagan. And I want to threaten John Poor for Shaobisi Raja. Is there any re reason other for challenge for not tacking past 15? See, someone's uh, paying attention to my track record here. I'm not one to easily give up on a crotch. Uh, but um, tacking, tacking up military is going to lower the points I get from raising provinces. Uh, so... Raising province is going to lower the amount. I mean, teching up any further is going to lower the amount of points that I get for raising shit. So. Nation state is making a comeback. No, nationalism is making a comeback, and it's terrible. It is terrifying. Because it's based on nothing except for the stuff that is created it is based it's literally based on jack 
shit. That's not what I wanted to do. Modern idea of nation state is that an idea in nation is that a nation should only have one ethnicity. Ah, that's what it evolved into. But really, what is one ethnicity? Ethnic. I can't even pronounce ethnicity. Eth ethnicity. I'm saying it right. That is what it involved into. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, I just disbanded my entire army that, that, that kind of spawned that coalition war. Oh, well, guess we'll have something interesting to fight. While I uh, ramble on and on about nationalism. Nationalism is making a comeback, but globalism is also being introduced to the picture. See, now we're getting into interesting, interesting discussions here. I'm actually slowly waking up. I was kind of in the process of falling asleep. But yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right on the money there. It's a response, but it only peaks in economically bad times, which is pretty funny. When can you convince someone of fantasy when shit goes bad? Have you ever thought about conquering all the fish styles? And play all about that bass by Megan Trainer. Uh, one of one of the runs was a um, Norwegian wood where we um, uh, the challenge was to conquer all the naval supplies provinces. And I was like, let's go one step beyond that and let's conquer every single coastal province in the game. <laughs> and that kind of. <laughs> And that seemed like kind of one step too far. Yeah, the the the, the resurgence of nationalism is. But well, you can. You can account that to. Uh... Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> 